Hello, welcome back to another lesson. Uh, today we talk about the question six of this paper A, terms, sign, and instrument. Okay, for all these uh, foreign terms, you can actually uh, refer to this chart. Uh, there is a chart, yeah, this one. I'm not sure you can, you have uh, downloaded this from the ABRSM the examination website. So these are the uh, foreign terms that you need to study. They are Italian, Italian, uh, French, and German. Okay, from grade one to grade five. If you are taking grade five exam, then I think better you can go and memorize all of them. And the musical signs are all here. Okay, so uh, this is the thing that you need to memorize. Okay, not so much by understanding. So uh, for these uh, foreign terms, Question 6.1 is always about uh, foreign terms for musical, uh, for the music. So, so a right means quick, trial rate means uh, set, so then closely means uh, dying away. For 6.2, uh, you can refer to your workbook. Usually before the uh, be, behind the theory workbook, you should be able to see this one. Okay. So if you want, you can make a screenshot of this. Okay, all about this is all about ornaments. Okay, we have achakatura. There yeah, are two notes. So achakatura also can call can be called as a uh, grace note. We can also call it grace note. Okay. Uh, so Ashakara usually have a slash and it's fast. The first note usually have triple tails, have three tails. So uh, it's term and uh, fast. Apogetura is the small, look like a small little baby note, but it doesn't have a slash like Ashakatura. Okay, so the two notes are played evenly. Okay. So if this is quaver, then the two notes split evenly, it becomes uh, quarter and quarter. If this is one tau, then this will be half and half. If this is minimum, then it will be crotchet and crotchet. So if it's dotted note, uh, uh, this note can be split into three quavers. Okay, if the note has a dot, then you have two quaver plus one quaver. Okay, two quaver plus one quaver when you write it out. If it's a dotted minimum, then this minimum, uh, dotted minimum has three crotchet. So when you write it out, the value of the note will be two crotchet plus one crotchet. Modern, we have upper modern and lower modern. Lower mo upper modern don't have slash, and it only has three notes. It only have three notes. Okay, so just now the apogatura and ashakatura usually have two notes. We write it out. Okay, this one is two notes, not including the tie. Okay, sometimes they will, uh, they will uh, do this. They will tie to another note, and then they, uh, they will put a bracket like this. But the tie note is not counted as one of them. So the tie note you cross out. Actually, it has only two notes. The same for modern. Modern has three notes. Sometimes they will trick you by adding another note, and then they will bracket like this. Okay, they tie to another note. Oh, you, it looks like four notes, but actually it's not. Cross out the tie note. It's actually three notes only. Okay, so three note is modern. So upper modern will go up first and then down. Then after that, it goes down. Okay, so uh, modern, the first two notes usually have three tails. So if it's lower modern, uh, also the first two notes also have three tails. And it has a slash at the center of the sign. Okay, so this one, lower model, usually it go down first, then after that it go up again. So this is the uh, characteristic of the uh, moderns. For turn, it has four notes. Turn has a sign. This is a sign of turn. You know, like an S, um, inverted S. So upper turn means it will start one step higher. And then this original note will repeat two times. 
Okay, when you write out, the original note will repeat two times. Okay, it starts one step higher. Okay, the first note always starts one step higher. This start one step higher than original note, repeat two times. Okay, so that is the uh, upper turn. You start one step higher. Okay, so the value of this note will split evenly from this crochet. Okay, if the if a turn is written above this note, it will split directly uh, from this crochet, the value of the crochet. Okay, so next one. Uh, next one is the turn is between two notes. Turn between two notes, we will borrow half the value from here. Okay, so if this is two counts, okay, then the, uh, we will split into crochet, uh, crochet and crochet. Split into one one. Okay, so these two groups of notes actually come from this minimum. Okay, borrow the turn here. Okay, this turn is in the center. This turn will borrow half a value of this. Half a value of half the value of this minimum. So it's one. Okay, so the turn is in between them. So when you borrow one, so this one left one. So this one one and then this one is two. Okay, next one. So the turn uh now you have lower turn. Lower turn is there is a slash at the middle. So a slash in the middle is start one step lower, and then the original note will repeat two times. Some students will ask, what if the turn has a dot? Okay, the what if the note has a dot? But when the note has a dot, uh, we don't borrow half the value from here. We just borrow the value of the main note, which is a crochet. So and now this is how you will draw it. So this one, you take away the uh, crochet, so it left with one quiver. It left with one quiver. Okay, left with one quiver. So this crochet will become the value of turn. So uh, upper turn, so you will, uh, Da, 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 da. So you can see the original note is repeated two times. Okay, this original note will repeat two times and it starts one step higher. Okay, so these four notes, this turn will borrow the value of crochet. Okay, so a four notes shared with by a crochet will be four semi quivers. Okay, and then after that, you will this one. Copy. Okay. So this is how you do it when a note has a dot. Okay. Next one, trill is the one that has a longer, has longer, how to say, longer melody line. Okay. So there are two ways the, down, up, down, the, 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 both ways are correct. So uh, if this is one crochet, this eight note must pick up one crochet. Okay, usually I will encourage this because it doesn't have a triplets. Usually I don't encourage triplets. So this show you can start one step higher. Da, 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 da. Okay, so usually we follow this pattern. This pattern is recommended. Okay, last one, arpeggiation. Uh, is four notes hold together. Just spread from the note, the note from bottom upwards. And all of them must tie, must hold together. So um, just a brief introduction about these ornaments. So you can see in brackets three notes. Under this bracket, there are three notes. Okay. So this one not counted, uh, you only have three notes. So three notes you look at this handout. Uh, three note is here. This one three notes. Okay, so it's a modern. When the written out ornaments has only three notes, it's a modern. So it's going down. It's going down first. So this is a lower modern. So this one, it bracket three notes, but actually only have two notes. We don't look at the tie. So actually this one only have two notes. So look at the two notes in your handout. Ah, two notes is here. Okay, so now you need to check is it even or uneven. Okay, so these two notes is fast. It has three tails. So which one is the one start with three tails? So it starts with three tails. So this one is more like an achakatura, okay? Okay, so achakatura always starts three tails. 
Twitter is fast. So this is Achakatuba. The violin sometimes uses the auto clap. So let's look at the chart. You need to have a chart like this. Usually behind your grade five theory gap book, you should be able to see this chart. If you don't have this chart, you can take a screenshot, okay? Uh, so now you see uh, violin. Can violin use auto clap? Uh, violin, no. Violin only use travel clap. Violin don't have uh, auto clap. So this is false. The oboe is highest sounding instrument, okay? So let's look at uh, woodwind, woodwind instrument. Woodwind instrument is here. Okay, so the, uh, the order of the instrument is from highest to lowest. So the highest should be a piccolo, okay? So this one is false. Oboe is not the highest. The trombone has a higher range than the tuba. Okay, go back to the... Trombone is under the brass section. So brass section is here. Yeah, trombone is higher than tuba, okay? This is the highest and tuba is the lowest. Okay, so trombone is higher than tuba. So, uh, so this is true. Bassoon is a transposing instrument. Uh, False. Bassoon is not a transposing instrument. Uh, bassoon. Wait, yeah, one moment. Bassoon is. Oh, my chat go missing. So sorry. Uh, yeah, bassoon is non-transposing instrument, okay? So uh, it's false. A uh, viola may be, might be played akko. Akko means uh, play with the bow, okay? So that means it's true. Viola is a string instrument. String can play with bow. Akko means play with the bow. Okay, next, number seven, music in context. Okay, now compare the following bars to bar two of the violin part. Okay, bar two violin part is here. Okay, so this is a lot higher than middle C, okay? It's, this note start with higher G. Okay, so now let's compare the music. So the first one uh, is, uh, if you transfer to a bass clap, first one is below the middle C, right? So C, B, A, G. So C, B, A, G. So this G is here because it's below the middle C, okay? So the exact position of this is here in treble clap. Uh, this is tenor clap, middle C is here. So for this one, it will be Uh, above the middle C, so go up to G. So it will be here. And then this one, the middle C is here. C go up to G. Okay, so this one is going above the middle C. So this G is here. Okay, same as this. Okay, now let's compare. They say A and C are correctly rewritten two octave lower. So uh, A is here below middle C. Okay, so this G is two octave lower than this G, okay? So this one is correct. A is two octave lower. But right, uh, question C is this one. Okay, this is C. Okay, example C. But this, is, this G is one octave lower than this, okay? So this one is wrong. So the first one is up. Because C is not two octaves. C is only one octave. So this is up. A is correctly rewritten two octaves lower. Yeah, correct. A is, uh, looks like this one is correct. So we see whether uh, the rest are correct or not. A and B are written two octaves lower. So 
this G, they say this B, this is two octave lower than this, which is wrong. It's one octave lower. Okay, so this one is up. This one is up. Uh, A, B, C are written two octave lower. No, okay. Some of them are only one octave. Like, uh, for example, this one. This is only one octave lower than uh, the, the bar two, this note. Okay, so this one is also up. Looks like only the second one is correct. Okay, so this is how we work out this answer. Now let's look at the next question. Next question, the violin should be played uh, sweetly. Okay, so uh, now let's find the statement about the music. Look at the statement about music. So, uh, so we play sweetly. So do you see the performance action for sweetly? Yes. Can you see this doce? Doce means sweetly. Okay, doce means sweetly. So this is correct. G minor is the relative minor key of E flat major. Okay, G minor and E flat major. If you have a chart with you, uh, not sure if you know how to draw this. Uh, in one of my video, I taught you how to draw this. So. This chart, you can go uh, to my video that talk about key signature. So G major and E minor are relative. So this is correct. Okay. Eh? No, no, no. G minor and E flat major. So sorry. G minor and E flat major. Let's compare. G minor. Sorry. I see the wrong place. G minor is here. G minor and E flat major. No, they are not relative. Okay. E flat major have three flat. G minor only have two flat. So they are not relative key. Relative key. So this one is false. The widest interval in the violin part is the perfect form. So violin part, uh, only violin, violin part, the widest interval. So look at violin part, biggest interval. Okay, looks like the biggest interval is here. C to G is fifth. Is even bigger than fourth. So this is not true. Huh? This is false. The lowest note, let's look for the lower note. They say it's a C. So it's the lowest note C. Let's look at the bass clef. Bass clef, the lowest note should be this. But this is not C. Huh? This is E flat. Okay, it has a flat. Okay, so this is also false. The speed of the music, when they talk about speed of the music, you look at the performance direction here. Andante is not very slow. Commoto means with movement. Okay, if you check the dictionary, you know this one is with movement. Andantino means a uh, walking pace. So it's not very slow. So this is a false. Which other instrument is best suited to play the violin part? Violin part is using treble clef. So when they ask you this, that uh, means they're asking you which other instrument is also using this clef. Okay, violin part, you must know what is the clef. So violin use treble clef. So over here, only flute is using treble clef. The rest, mostly bass clef. The rest are all bass clef, okay? So only flute is correct. So E flat major, sub median is the sixth note. So in E flat major, one, two, three, four, five, six. E, F, G, A, B, C. So it should be C, no flat, okay? So look for C in the violin part. In violin part, look for all the C. Let me erase all this. Okay, violin part, uh, C. I found one here. It can be higher C, it can be middle C, okay? Whatever C. It can be high, it can be low. Uh, one time, two times. I only, I only found two. So it only occurred two times? Yes. Okay. Which bar contains a tonic chord in second version, E flat major? So tonic means the first, first note, okay? Which means the note must start with E. Okay. Tonic means first note. So it must start with first note, E flat major. So it's E, G, B flat. And they say second version, okay? So uh, if it's first in a uh, root position, if E at the base, it's called root position. 
If G at the base, it means first inversion. If B flat at the base means it's a second inversion. Okay, so second, if it's second inversion means you need to look for this at the base. The lowest note must be B flat, and then the rest of the note must be E flat and G. Okay, so let's look at look for the B flat at the base first. You should be able to find your answer quickly. Okay, by looking at this, it looks like I found a B flat in the first line. You have B flat, B flat. Okay, so the rest of the note should be E flat and G. Okay, E flat and G. Okay, so I found E flat, G, B flat. Okay, so it's here. So it's in bar three. Okay, so it's bar three. Which bar contains a chord of G major? A chord of G major means we start with G again, G, B, D. So look for these three notes, G, B, D. The bar must contain all three notes of G, B, D. If you name all the notes, like this is B, G, B, there's no D. Okay, if you name all of them one by one, you should be able to find a G, B, D. To find G, B, D, looks like you have here G, this is B, B, D. Ah, see, all three notes are here. All the G, B, D are here. All three notes can be found here. So it's in bar seven. <clears throat> Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, please stay subscribed and uh, introduce my channel to your friends. More subscribers will motivate me and encourage me to create more free lessons. Um, if you find my use lesson useful, please click like. And if you have any question, you can comment in the comment box. I look forward to seeing you in the le next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Goodbye.